They say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And in professional football, they say what happens in the huddle stays in the huddle. Seldom do you get to hear the conversations and inner workings of the huddle between the action on the field. It is a place for players to come together, regroup, and focus on the next play and all the information that's given to them. It is usually a place of great focus and concentration, but there is also a lot of levity as well as some funny stories that happen in the huddle. When I was watching NFL films one time, it, it told the story that uh, Joe Montana, before the game-winning drive against the Cincinnati Bengals in one of the Super Bowls, he uh, he came in the huddle and the first thing he said was, hey, look over there, there's John Candy. It's just neat that they could kind of step out of the box and see like, hey, you've got to relax yourself. You've got to slow your mind down, realize that you don't need to panic. When Joe Montana related that story before his epic game-winning drive in Super Bowl 23, it opened up the world of what happens inside the huddle of a football game. Generally speaking, the quarterback is always considered to be in command of the huddle, but the dynamic between him and his teammates can be interesting when planning the next play. My favorite guy uh, since I've been here has been Tim O'Neill. Uh, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of sarcastic. He's funny. You know, he says what's on his mind. Uh, if he's angry, you can kind of tell he's angry. So, you know, being around Tim was always fun up there, and he's still there sometimes as well now. But, uh, you know, we, we have a good group of guys, and we're, it's a pretty relaxed atmosphere, so we, ne we never get too tense. It's really funny when I always get in and I always say what's up and then whatever comes to my mind about whatever. And uh, it's always interesting to see which guys turn around and are listening to me because I say something just dumb and off the wall to see who's paying attention. And it's really funny when you get off offensive lineman kind of look back at me and go, what? All right, he's ready to go. He's paying attention. So that's, that's what I do. Me coming in as a, as a young guy, being in a huddle with uh, Jason Tucker and, you know, uh, Camille Peterson, Ricky Ray, those type of guys, you know, just seeing how they went about doing things. You know, Ricky don't say a word. He don't say a word, but when he make a big play, his excitement level, he tried to get up there, but he kind of fall. But, you know, that's that's kind of things I remember. The funniest guy that I played with had to be uh, a Darius Bull. He's nonstop. All day. He's a great teammate. He's a great guy to be around. He, if you have a down day, he's definitely going to be that guy to pick you up and huddle. While players try to keep things light, there is always pressure to execute and win the game. Most of that pressure falls on the quarterback. They need to be constantly prepared and the unquestionable leader in the huddle. Troy Smith last year, he lined up and uh, puked and then backed up and then actually ran the play. So that was kind of interesting, I guess. But I've, we've seen that in TV, but never in real life. So that happened last year. Dan LaFever. Our quarterback for short yardage came out and told us we're going to go 10 wedge, that's sneak. And he said we're going on two. Now our veteran center, Marwan Hage, he's seen it all, 10 year vet. He sees guys jump offside on sneak all the time. So he said, no, we're not going on two, we're going on one. And Dan Lefevre, a normally soft spoken, quiet guy with a short fuse, he blew up. He said, we're going on two. And we went on two. <laughs> and no one went outside. As the leader inside the huddle, the quarterback is the one who will inspire confidence for his teammates. 2009, we're playing at Edmonton. Quentin Porter, one of the best sneak down quarterbacks I've ever had the pleasure of boxing for, called the play on a real quick hurry up mode so we didn't have a lot of time to talk about it. We were going sneak. And as we're getting lined up on the line, he decided to announce for the whole defense to hear, Peter, I'm going behind you. So I thought, well, thanks for telling all the 320 pounders lined up in front of me where we're headed. But it was probably the most inspirational speech I've ever been given because I knew if I didn't give her and explode with everything I had, I was going to get buried. So I drove you know, two giant men out of the way and Quentin dove right up in there. We got a first down, so it worked out. Great couple was in 05. AC, we were in uh, double overtime. We had a fade ball, second and 20. AC looked at me and he gave me a little nod. He goes, okay, this one's yours. Like, and he threw it up. I ended up catching a touchdown in overtime. Even though there are more no huddle offenses in today's game, the huddle remains one of the best places for a quarterback to communicate with his teammates. When it's you know second and two or it's a big time drive, uh, to be able to, you know to go in there and say, hey, you know we need this. This is a big big series for us, big play, and to be able to look those guys in the eyes, that's a that's a good feeling and uh, something that I like about being in the huddle.